Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Building This City. This is Soap the Great. And before I get started, I would like to say a warm welcome to all the new subscribers. I've recently had a small influx. It's not not tons, but uh, you know every little bit counts, right? So uh, I do welcome you to the channel. Hopefully I keep your interest, and uh, I do always welcome your comments, questions, and suggestions, so feel free to leave those for me below. And if you think about it, please do give this a thumbs up because it helps me out. And that's only really if you are enjoying this particular episode. But uh, anyway, so for those of you that have been with me for a little bit, and those of you, uh, you, you already know about this, but those that are new may not know that I recently completed the Enderman Farm build. And uh, it took two episodes and... Overall, it uh, was a lot of a lot of planning, a lot of checking out of possible designs, uh, a lot of material gathering, a lot of crafting, and then moving the material from here and from my base all the way over to the end. And then the decoration took a little bit of time in my creative world, and so it was a lot of planning, a lot of work. And by the end of it, you know, I just got a little bit demotivated I gotta say N not for playing Minecraft necessarily but just for recording um, certainly not bored with Minecraft and I, in fact I probably am in the same boat as a number of you you've got more ideas than time that is certainly the case here um, tons of ideas not a lot of time so I'm certainly not getting bored but you know just just getting on and, and recording with all of the uh, time and effort that it took for the um, recording itself and then the post-processing it's just a decent amount of effort and uh, so yeah um, you know it, it helped though that I had recently watched a generic B episode on the Minecraft server and um, he'd gone through a move internationally and just a lot of stuff and he just said you know what if you ever get to that point just get on and play don't bother recording so that's what I did I got on to some grindy stuff like uh, farming and and uh, breeding and harvesting cows and um, tried some new stuff found a, got a tutorial for a pretty easy no climb cow farm and we're, we're gonna be building that in some later up or in a later episode both here and at my base but um, but yeah, I just had a lot of fun doing some grinding work. But one of the things that I really enjoy doing as far as grinding work goes is I just come out and collect clay. I don't really need it. I've got a surplus of it. But I just throw on the scuba helmet, grab a shovel, water breathing potion, and collect clay. Just come out here. So I was out here near spawn. You can see it here right here and I found we hadn't really collected out here and uh, you know it's really a shame because uh, clay is a pretty cool building block there's a lot of uses for it and we haven't really done too much as far as the clay goes around spawn so I was just collecting and collecting and right out here in the middle of this bay I've got it marked here with a cobblestone pillar but I was coming along right here just outside spawn and this is what I found I've got it lit up right now so you can tell what that is that's a little skelly skelly spawner this is a skeleton dungeon open to the surface under the water isn't that cool and now I, I know we've already got a skeleton grinder um, I don't know if I've shown that to you. I'm having a hard time on that. So let's just go over to land here. So we've already got a skeleton grinder. It's to the north. It's just off the inner biome railway, but you have to go to the village and then go to the desert next to it. Or go through the nether on on my uh, nether rail. And, and it is a bit of a hassle to get to. And 
it would just be nice and convenient um, to have one close by. So, so you know what I think we're going to do is I think over there we're going to have, well, let's get up here, see if we can see it. I think, uh, I think maybe, maybe just maybe, we should build another skeleton grinder, but this time close to spawn. I mean, with the source of bones this close to spawn, just think of the possibilities. I mean, we could have a flower farm for poppies and dandelions, since we didn't get the dandelions in the last set of flower farms we did. You know, I mean, and right here, close to spawn, just think of the bone meal that could go in there. Or we could even have a semi-automatic tree farm close to spawn. I mean, just think of the possibilities. And, and so close to spawn. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hopefully that turns out. But, uh, yeah, the little grinder that I showed you underwater is that thing right there. And I've done a little bit of work, as you can see. So there we go. I've currently got the farm off, which means those lights are on. And the way I indicate it is through this light right here. But we are going to close it up a little bit, and then I can show you some of that operation. Let's just, uh, is there? Nope. Nope, we're using cobble. But uh, let, me, let me just leave a little bit of room here so you can see this in action. There we go. We get an almost immediate spawn. And they are headed over there. And they want to get me pretty badly. But you can see they get funneled down in there. And what a lovely noise. So as you can see from that little spawner room, it's a rather big drop. And that makes sure that the skeletons get out of the range of the spawner as quickly as possible. And... Uh, we just have a simple torch tower back behind here turning on that light system, which I'm going to show you, but not quite yet. Um, you know, as with all of my builds, I do like to show you the redstone behind some of it. So this one is no different. So let's take a look here. Uh, I left myself a little maintenance area. So we just go here. There's some sticky pistons back there. Uh, you can't see them. Yeah, you can't see them. But... Uh, here we go. The, the skeletons get funneled down to a little drop shaft. It's not, um, it doesn't impart any fall damage. Hopefully that's not too loud. Let me turn down the hostile creatures a little bit. There we go. And you can see them, you can see them kind of glitching in right there. Uh, they're all coming down here. There's water there and it's drowning them. Their drops go down into this dropper here. And there's a little comparator clock off that way. It shoots them into a redstoneless item elevator. And that then goes to an item sorter. And it's the same item sorter I built for the witch farm and the spider farm. Uh, the elevator itself is behind that block. And then... Well, we can we can just pop in there real quick and take a look. No, I, f I filled that in. Okay, you see there? So we've got a little water stream up top. It carries them into the sorting hoppers. That's the extra one. Right there is the arrows. So there we go. Um, it's a nice little, nice little benefit to have close to spawn, as you can see. But uh, let's just grab some of the bones that are there. I'm just going to leave this close, you know, leave it on. Because, you know, it's, it turns off by itself if a player's not nearby. And we could always use the bones if somebody does happen to be in the area. So I've built this little tunnel that takes us up into the main spawn area. 
and I am getting the read timeout exception. So I will be back in just a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And you know that has to do with a design flaw in the laptop that I have. They put the Wi-Fi card right next to the heat sink for the processor. And so when the processor gets kind of warm, like when I'm running Minecraft and the recording software, the network card tends to give out a little bit. But anyway, let's take a look at some of this other stuff that's around here. So I built another flower farm with an, uh, that takes a lot of the bone meal that uh, comes from the new skeleton grinder. And this gives us poppies and dandelions. It's not like we need more poppies because we've got the iron farm. But the dandelions were the one flower that did not get covered in all those farms that we built down to the south near that village. So let's just pick these up here. It's the same design, uh, just the only difference here is I put the switch over here and the bone meal. How do these sheep keep getting out? Hmm. The bone meal entrance goes here. And I'm probably going to get that uh, that thing again, so I will be right back. All right, so the bone meal just goes in here, per per uh, you know that the way that design had. But uh, the other thing that hopefully comes out in that video is this addition right here. Okay built it just outside of spawn and I've even decorated it but this is a semi-automatic tree farm this is not my design this is actually from a mumbo jumbo video it's a design similar to what I've seen say on the zip crowd server so uh, I don't know who originally came up with it I've also seen it at Queen King Happy's base on Hermitcraft so uh, I don't know who came up with it, but it is really effective. And uh, we can just, you just grab some of these and we'll flip this thing on. You know, no bone meal is actually being dispensed at the moment, but uh, it, it only dispenses once we actually throw a tree on there. And I've come to find out that it works with birch trees in addition to oak. Uh, don't have any birch saplings there, but you know, it's a bit difficult. I I was under the mistaken impression that um, the haste two beacon with an efficiency five axe would make instant mining on the wood, but that is not the case. We're gonna go take a little nap real quick just to make sure we don't get surprised by anybody. Uh, and that's just up here. So no, the haste 2 effect on the beacon and efficiency 5 on an axe do not make you instant mine wood. I don't know that it increases your wood gathering. I don't know that haste 2 even affects it at all. Um, but uh, you know, I put in a haste 2 and speed 2 beacon. I'm having issues with rendering, I guess. There they are. And you can see them come in there. Speed 2, haste 2. And so that speed 2 kind of messes up hitting a button and walking into an iron door. If we go here, I've only done a few since, uh, since last collecting, but all of the trees get pushed into a nice little it could technically be a cube if the oak trees grew to a height well no it wouldn't be a cube so it's only the max can go is 13 by 13 by 7 uh, but oak trees don't tend to get that large but uh, there's there's enough space for them to grow anyway we can use birch trees I was 
unaware that we could do that. I think any other trees will mess up the system. But you can put some birch trees in there just to try it out. There we go. Okay, got in. We will put the oak sapling there. And what? No. Okay. On. And throw one of those on. And that adds a nice little um, different texture in that wood chunk that gets pushed out to the platform out there. Just having a little birch in there for, for good measure. Oh, so it finally went. Wow, that was a lot of a lot of bone mill used for that. Or it could be that I'm generating a massive amount of lag and it's just taking a while to catch up. But that is the tree farm and what's really cool is that it is so close to spawn, right? Um, that means that we don't have to go to the desert to grab bones and we don't have to go to the desert to use that tree farm anymore. We got one right here. Uh, the other thing, uh, this is just where extra stuff goes, but let's go topside. I put in a little maintenance area. Like I, you know, I've said it before, I I like being able to get back and look at the redstone. It's a common feature whenever I do a build like this. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up with the bone meal that I have collected. I spent a little bit of time just hanging out at the bone farm. Um, I covered myself in a little bit of dirt, and when I came back, I found that Caleb of Caleb Cloud fame had encased me in even more dirt, which is great, but it wasn't that hard to to get out of that, so no harm, no foul. Just a nice little AFK prank. You know, if somebody's AFK, have at it, right? <laughs> but no, uh, we, we have fun on this server. So here we go. I'm filling up the bone meal storage for, for the tree farm so that if anybody comes along and wants to use it, they're not going to have to worry about this for quite some time. At least, well, I don't know. You never know how much wood you might need. But there we go. That's a decent amount. So what we'll do... Um, you know what, I'm going to put a link to Mumbo Jumbo's video in the description so that you can see his tutorial um, and and that should give you a good idea of how it all works, but um, I've, I've gotten it hidden fairly well, so I don't know that you'll be able to get to it. Just suffice it to say, there's a bud switch there, and that makes all the other pistons go. So um, let's take a look at the design. Now, one of the things that I have not done. Um, you know, on every build, I do try and close off some things. Like when I initially did the iron farm, the collection area was right here. So I made that little storage, uh, extra storage room there. But the updates with the gold farm, um, I did that and I didn't cover it in. And the reason I didn't cover it in at that point was because that's when the initial indication from 1.8 had come out and there was distinct possibility of them nerfing Iron Golem collection and Zombie Pigman collection and that would have been a bit of a bummer. I would have had to come up with new designs for it which is fine. Um, you know I don't mind having to think a little bit more especially as far as automation is concerned so I wanted to leave that open that's why I didn't cover that in but this one is done okay so I just went ahead and covered it in. It's pretty simple. We've got plenty of iron, so this lets you see some of the redstone. I, I think redstone is cool. I think the mechanism is pretty cool, so I just covered it in with the iron bars, and so you can see it a little bit, but not quite, and it, it kind of puts a, a uniform texture over the whole thing. Did that on the three sides here, and the other side is actually where the wood comes out of the machine so we don't want to block that up. Um, 
Let's see what else. This I I just love this design um, since I saw it on B Dub's build of the Minecraft Town Hall. This little wood inset with the stone fence surrounding it. It's just really cool. It adds a lot of texture, a lot of depth right there in a fairly small space. I mean, that's that's two blocks deep, two blocks wide. It's not that bad at all. You pair it with something else right here, um, you get a decent amount of texture for not that complicated of a build. So that's what I went with there, and you're probably going to see that a lot. Um, I've already done that over there on that building for the day gate which isn't working um, but we're gonna see that in a, in a few more spots okay but uh, let's see is there anything else I mean, we got that skeleton grinder oh yeah let me show you the lighting system because that was the other thing now in when I was doing the spider farm I had mentioned the lighting system in brief, okay? The one I was doing there, you saw it with a bunch of sticky pistons and um, redstone blocks. I mean, it it seems like you, you could technically call it unnecessarily complicated, but um, the reason is I was working on this one. So you, you see right here, we're underwater. Okay, uh, let me make sure, let me get this bucket of water here. So, we're underwater, and the reason I did the spider farm was not because we actually needed it there, but because we needed it here and I wanted to play with the concept. But what I've got is the entrance area, the farm itself is right there, or under, under those blocks, and we've got the switch that turns it on that extends that piston which pushes the redstone blocks which then increase our uh, push you know make those other pistons push out redstone blocks and all the way out and uh, these redstone blocks cover over redstone lamps and under here they open up more redstone or more uh, what are those pistons so uh, the reason I did this is because I, you know, since we're underwater, there's the risk of someone punching a hole accidentally or something into here, and then all the redstone and comparator, or, uh, comparators and repeaters get washed away. But with this, they are actual solid blocks, or, well, no, they're transparent, but they will not move if water hits them. So if somebody happens to puncture this and water starts flowing in since we are on ocean floor uh, it will not cause a problem so that's why I did that it's a little bit slower but um, a little less dangerous as far as making sure that it still works so that that is what I did for that one um, I, I do like having the on off switch just in case, um, you know, just in case we wanted to get in there and do some work on the system. I don't know that we will there, but it's, you know, the feature is there in case somebody wants to use it. And I'm all for adding that freedom. So, uh, let's see. You know what? I think, you know, it might be a bit short, but I think that's going to be it for this episode, okay? Um, the next time, it it's time to finish up some projects. Since we've gotten a pretty good assurance lately, um, at least from what I've been seeing from the snapshot videos, I don't think they're going to nerf this anymore. So iron golems, like right there, are still going to drop iron ingots, and zombie pigmen will still drop gold nuggets. So I think we are safe to decorate this farm, and that's what we're going to do next time. Um, yeah, 
yeah, that's what we're going to do next time. We're going to cover that in, put a nice little design on it. I've been working on one in Creative, but I haven't quite finished it. Um, we'll finish it here, okay? So that's going to be next time. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed those builds. We've got some new stuff here available to the other server members. Um, and hopefully they are able to get some use out of it as well. But uh, that is it for this episode. If you enjoyed, please leave a thumbs up on it. It helps me out. It helps other people find it. And if you really enjoyed and are not yet subscribed, think about subscribing. I try to get these out every Saturday. And occasionally some other stuff. So we've got a single player series, a multiplayer series, um, tutorials every now and then. And uh, I'm just having a lot of fun with this game. So... Uh, Join along with me if you are enjoying this game as well. So that is it, and uh, I do thank you for watching. Leave your comments, questions, suggestions in the area below, or you can find me on Twitter at MCSoapGreat. I love hearing from you, so catch me there. Catch me down in the comments below. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.